The power of religion is to always be accounted. Many a leader of a people has used its influence to their own means. But sometimes the people get their own ideas. See, many leaders have used their authority over their religion to organize their people, regardless of their actual belief in said religion. The problem, however, is that there are some fanatics that know more about the religion than their leader. And this can cause problems. Now, the inhabitants of Neador are known for their adherence to religion, and the group that is the most famous in this regard are the Phantoms, or Acolytes as they prefer to be known. And the older a religious order is, the more that the ideas tend to separate over time. Over this time, authority of the leaders is questioned, and more and more fanatics gain power. Today, I wish to speak about a phantom that did just that, who started her own sect and rebelled against the Circle. One that stands outside of all the other phantom orders. A templeless order of fanatics is the result of her endeavours, and her teachings are still held with fire and prejudice to this day. By some of them. It is a long story. Today I am speaking of the Phantom Snyonda. Now, I will let you know that speaking of this order to some members of the Acolytes will result in them, if you're lucky, just hating you. See, most of the inner circles hate her, and view her, as well as all of her teachings, as heretical. Her followers are to even be cast down and slain. So keep in mind, what I'm technically about to inform you about is heresy to those of Neador. The history of this order and its origin is short and lacking in many detail. Hell, the temple she was originally a part of has been lost the time, but that doesn't really matter that much, as her rebellion, or uprising, whatever you wish to call it, had members from every single one of the temples, including the minor ones that have been somewhat forgotten. But I'm skipping a bit ahead now, so I think I should get back to her origin, or shall I say, awakening? Rebellion, whatever you want to call her little escapades. Little was known about her early life, and it was most likely unremarkable. Most likely, she was born to a Neador family and inducted into the circles at a young age, like most phantoms are. I would like to also note that a lot of this information is rarely known to outsiders, and most of this tale is a third-hand, maybe even fourth-hand retelling of the events, so not all of the details are going to be correct, or even fully known, but I shall try my best to retell this tale from the information I have gathered on my travels. To start with, she took to the faith a lot more than most. See, there are many religious practices that the phantoms partake in. Worshipping of their god Mjord, mostly, it's their primary purpose, but there is also the praying to the relics as well as many teachings of the Age of Madness. But she would go a bit too far, she never missed a ceremony, and went to every single type of them every single day. From morning till midday, before she got to the rest of her duties. From every relic, to whatever the dragon her temple held as sacred. And she would go to do so constantly. This was not too out of the ordinary, but what was, was how by the book she was to the point where she would even argue with her elders over the slightest misinterpretation of their religion. This only really became a problem when another phantom figure became involved. When the members of her inner circle committed the rite of Halvinger, and extended their lives in return for him having power over them, she saw this as an act of heresy, and in the eyes of Snjaldar, this could not be forgiven. She argued more and more with the elders, and started a major debate among her circle, gathering a handful of followers, until it became a bit too tiring, and the elders want nothing to do with it, and so they kicked her out along with some of her most fanatical followers. Enraged by this, she journeyed to another temple to right this wrong and get them to agree with her, but to her surprise, not only was Halvinger's influence found here as well, but the grip was even tighter. And at this moment, she knew what this was. It was heresy, 
plain and simple. The phantoms, in want of power and immortal life, had forsaken the words of their god and lost their way. But she knew that all phantoms were not like them. Some must be like her, true to the words of Njord, and so she would find them and start a religious uprising. It took a few years, but she did manage to convince many from all of the temples from all around the country of her message, that the worlds of Harvinger are poison and must be rooted out. Her numbers grew and grew until she had a formidable force, and decided that words were no longer enough, that a rebellion was in order. Her forces fought many a battle, almost always over the relics and written rites, the teachings of their ways. See, she wanted to prove that they have the rights of Mjol and his teachings at their heart. There was a problem with her rebellion, however. See, given how quickly she managed to gather her numbers, there was nothing really keeping them in line other than their hatred for Halvinger. So almost all of them came to disagreements on practically everything else, and if it wasn't for Snjordar's direct control, disorganization was swathed through the ranks like mad. This lack of control, as well as the almost unmatched power of Halvinger, resulted in their defeat and outcasting, after a multi-year bloody campaign. But Snjordar's faith never wavered and how true, turning an active conflict into a guerrilla warfare, something the phantoms are unmatched in. Even against their own numbers, they are really hard to stop in this regard. The groups began to split off more and more, to the point where Snjordar was the only thing keeping them together. So it made it all the more the shame when she died by the hands of Harvinger after a few more bloody years of this conflict. This is seen as an act of martyrdom, to be emboldening of her closest followers, the ones directly under her control. But a lot of them, perhaps the majority of them, split off for one reason or another, resulting in almost every temple having multiple groups of outcasts. And in fact, I can almost guarantee that most outcasts at least had a hand in the rebellion led by Snjordar, most likely resulting in all of the outcasts that we know, the temple circles of the Phantom Orders. Not all of them, mind you. Some still hold true to her beliefs, but most of them had in fact changed over this time, to the point where the majority of these new outcasts caused by the Civil War could have stories in and of themselves. But since this all happened so many years ago, they have all adopted their own cultures and beliefs by now. Some stayed as religious fanatics, thinking more of the temples have strayed from their paths and must be corrected at war. Some took to a more local belief of Neador supremacy, guarding the borders from outsiders, carefully and stealthily killing all that come too close. One smaller circle took to burning themselves in the name of the Sun God. I even know of one that now vow to hold a hoard of wealth and have gold as a sacred thing. A group that venerates greed in a way. But that is the tale of Snjordar and her accomplishments. And in all fairness, the major event she caused was the most important part of her tale. And in general, some famous figures can be defined by just one event. And that was purely the case for her. An event that changed the Phantom's direction in history, splitting their ranks massively, is the only thing she can really call to her name. But it caused so much, it would be amiss not to mention it. Thank you for listening to my tales. I am the Ashspawn. Feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It really does mean a lot to me. But, till next we meet, fellow traveller. Have a good day.